Welcome to the channel, Gaming Army. This video finds us in our Hunchback. It is a Hunchback 4J. And the first match of two finds us in a domination match on Canyon Network. Now, for those of you who are very astute viewers, you've already noticed something very specific and different about this Hunchback. And that's because it is a 4J variant. Most of you are used to seeing a Hunchback build with a mm, couple of backup lasers but the predominant feature is that big ballistic weapon in the right shoulder this build is a little bit different from that and it's a departure from a standard bill and that's because this build has New two lrm 15s in the right torso now i've paired that up with tag for helping to lock onto targets and i do have a couple of medium lasers on board just as backup weapons um, but quite honestly if something overruns me i'm gonna be in deep trouble our top speed is 68 kph and all in all it's not too shabby that's a lot of firepower loaded into a 50 ton chassis so far we've been doing a pretty good job of staying kind of middle of the pack that's a good position for us and we want to add support fire wherever possible now i don't want to take too much early game damage because later i do want to get line of sight to enemy targets and i do want to make sure that i'm using my tag because that will greatly speed up my lock on times on the enemy targets so that i can keep raining missiles on the enemy. Now the tag has already paid off just because that Hellbringer with his ECM was quickly nullified <laughs> and I was able to let my teammates not only know that he was there but I was also able to get some missile shots and drive him back into cover. Now for the record I am not the best player in the world when it comes to LRMs. That is not my preferred play style so don't roast me too hard in the comments but i did want to get this out for two reasons number one i want to demonstrate how versatile the hunchback target. chassis is and i think acquired. everybody is so focused on it's got to be an ac20 or lb20 or something oh, that they forget this is an option now speaking of missiles the only two ways that I know of to get locks on targets is number one, have your teammates get locks on their targets and then you can piggyback. Or number two is get the locks on your own. And in that arena, the only thing this build is missing is maybe a jump jet or two just to be able to pop up out of cover get the lock on the enemy and drop back down. That might make it a little stronger build but there's actually nothing wrong with this build as is. Now, I did manage to move out of the Delta 5 area, pull back towards Delta 4 a little more, just because there were a couple of enemy units that were applying some pressure in the Delta 5 area. In fact, there they are now, and there is three of them, including this summoner, and he has streaks. Good thing I'm taking him at range, and I'm going to add as much support fire to my friendly unit on that side as I can. The summoner is hurt, he's open, Destroyed. there goes his torso, and we actually managed to get the kill, good for us, and that takes one out of the game. There's still two more units, and that's why I'm kind of backing off, trying to stay with my teammates. And there's the Vapor Eagle, and he's got a friend with him. I'm not quite sure who the friend is, but the Vapor Eagle looked damaged and i know this is a bit risky i'm leaving my my teammates but i'm thinking i might want to pursue that because he was damaged i just don't know what that second trailing unit was let me know in the comments how you would have played this scenario there's two choices to be made either i can turn and flee and catch up with my teammates or i can stay where i'm at and hold the line now my indecision has cost me and the choice was made for me because here comes the enemy units and that is not what I wanted to see. That summoner is fairly fresh and he's pushing me. So my LRMs are pretty much useless at this point and I have to rely on my two medium lasers. This isn't going to end well, but hopefully I bought my teammates some time elsewhere on the board. 
This is a really close match at this point of the game. We're ahead on kills, but they're ahead on caps. So let's see how this is going to play out. From the looks of it, it looks like a lot of my teammates are heavily damaged, and the enemy has managed to reconsolidate its position somewhat in the center high ground. The enemy direwolf is open left leg, but with the firepower he's carrying, he is a very dangerous mech to leave on the battlefield. He's hitting his jump jets and dropping right in amongst my teammates. Now, he's going to get focused. Hopefully, they can take him out before he does too much damage. And he does manage to get another kill, and this ties up the kills at 9-9. Then it goes to 10-9, and very quickly it goes to 10-10, so it's just a giant kill trading fest in the center. And now it's two versus two, and unfortunately our friend the summoner is not as damaged as I would like to see at this stage of the game. Thunderbolt is peeling off, he's heading for high ground. Unfortunately there is an enemy UAV up above him that's going to give away his movement and position to the enemy units so that they can plan for his approach. So we'll see how this plays out if they're able to focus him down or if the Thunderbolt can pull off a surprise attack. My inability to kill the Vapor Eagle earlier in the match is coming back to haunt me. It looks like my teammates are more focused on the Summoner and the Vapor Eagle is heavily damaged and would be the easier target to remove of the two enemy targets. Now a teammate of mine just went down and that leaves the Thunderbolt solo 1v2. Summoner is charging. Looks like he's going to be the distraction and tank all the shots and that allows the Vapor Eagle to stand on the outskirts shooting into the fray adding support fire and more damage to this situation. In the end it just winds up being too much for our Thunderbolt to handle and switching over to our end screen we wound up with a single kill, four assists, 627 damage done. Moving over to our next drop, this one has us playing Assault Mode on Terra Therma Classic. Now, hopefully between the last video and we'll see how this one plays out, but hopefully the case has been made that you don't have to take a heavy chassis or an assault chassis and load them down with LRMs to be effective. Again, this is a lighter chassis and we're able to do quite a bit of work on the enemy with the loadout that we currently have. Now one of my light units has managed to find this catapult out in the open and we're going to add some support fire to him. I just need to be aware of the ranges. He's right at the fringe of my extreme range of missiles. And yeah, I know the tag isn't doing anything. It's muscle memory, guys. I've just gotten into the habit of anytime I lock on an enemy target, I also activate the tag, even if they're obscured by terrain. It's kind of force of habit at this point. Typically, if I am locking on an enemy target, I also want to activate my tag. And that's because I don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to move themselves out into the open? Or maybe they have jump jets and decide at that moment to go vertical. Either way, my tag is already active and it can lock them up in a hurry not only decreasing my lock times, but also helping out friendly units get their locks as well. Now, as you have with most matches, getting locks and being able to hold onto locks becomes very problematic between terrain and cover and deprivation and ECM and all the negatives stacked against me. I've got to maneuver into various positions looking for my next targets. Again, I want to lock my tag on if I can, and I also want to get them in an area where I can actually land my missiles on target. Things like, I don't know, a Warhammer with medium lasers is a great target because I have range on him. Unfortunately, he ducks back into cover because he doesn't want to eat my missiles, and I'm forced to go searching yet again. 
Now there's my buddy again, the Warhammer on the other side, but I'm taking more fire from that Bushwhacker. We'll get a parting shot on him, and this is a juicy opportunity. An enemy Blood Asp in the wide open, and I can lock my tag on him as well. Now I'm staying focused on the Blood Asp because I didn't see the killboard update, and sure enough, he shut down and he just started back up again. Unfortunately, that distraction has allowed the fire starter to move in on me and he has underrun my LRMs. So now the only thing I have is my two medium lasers as backup. Well, okay, I can tag him and spot for my teammates, but as he runs away, he opens the distance and I'm able to get a couple of parting shots with my LRMs uh, because he increased the distance as he was running. Now there's a couple of units here on the left side looking like they want to come in and join the fun. And we'll keep an eye on them. First the Bushwhacker, now the Grand Dragon. Didn't have a good angle on that Grand Dragon for the missiles. And I don't think he took any damage whatsoever. I'm going to shift back around here to the right. And not only do we find the Grand Dragon, but we find one of his buddies in the backfield as well. And we'll get some shots on them. And here comes an Orion out of nowhere. He is a close-in brawling setup and very dangerous, especially to a mech like me with only two medium lasers to fire in return. Luckily, I am getting a lot of focus fire from my teammates, and they quickly put him down, avoiding what could have been very disastrous. And that is the problem with an LRM-based mech is that at some point you will get underrun and then the question is what do you do now so now I'm still trying to stay in the center of my teammates I've got a bushwhacker and a second unit to my left two units that I saw to my right somebody wrote a song about this I think Steeler's wheel stuck in the middle with you yeah that's pretty much what I feel like I've got two to the right of me down below and it looks like they want to come up King Crab is open CT. His right torso is gone already. Let's see if we can get the kill on him and take him out of the game. And we do. We get our second kill. Warhammer has pushed up. He's ignoring me, which I am more than grateful for because I don't want to face all of those medium lasers. But we also have the Grand Dragon, and he has heavy PPCs, which I do not want to face. But if I do have to face them, I want to try and underrun his minimums where he won't do any damage. The problem with that is, if I underrun his minimums, my LRMs are worthless. Luckily, the dragon moves on, and that allows us to go back and refocus the Warhammer. Now, I'm trying that little trick where you tilt up, and that'll get your missiles up and over. Give them a little extra arc, trying to clear that rock in the center. I still don't think I got the hits on the Warhammer that I was intending, but it was worth the try. Now I'm in a tough position because we don't have eyes on any of the enemy units. I know the Grand Dragon was up here somewhere, and I've got to be very, very careful that I don't blindly round a corner and stumble into them. Again, two medium lasers is not a lot to defend yourself with. Uh, especially against heavy PPCs. Adding pressure to the situation is the fact the kill board is tied at nine apiece. And here comes our friend the Grand Dragon. He is open left leg. He's open in the back and we've managed to do some more damage to his rear torso. I'm totally focused on him when in charges one of his teammates. It's a Warhammer. And even though he's heavily damaged, all I have at close range is two medium lasers. But two medium lasers is enough, and we rack up our third kill of the match. Quickly shifting back to the Grand Dragon, let's continue to get some missiles on him and drive him to cover. I don't want to eat the heavy PPCs, and I am now out of LRMs. So my only hope is to charge him. Two medium lasers versus two heavy PPCs. I need to get in close and stay in close and underrun the minimums on those PPCs. I think he knows what I have planned and he wisely bails off the backside. I've got to stay in pursuit. I've got to reel him in if I'm going to have a shot at taking him out. I've got to do everything I can to get under 90 meters 
to the Grand Dragon and stay there. It's going to be difficult because I think he's a little faster than I am. However, both his legs are open. I'm going to aim for the legs. If I can sweep one of his legs, that will take down his mobility and then I can easily stay up close and personal with him and pick him apart with my medium lasers while his weapons will do no damage. He's evading me and heading back to the high ground. I have no choice but to follow, and this is a very bad move because if I was him, I'd be waiting for me to peek over the top of this rise. And in fact, there he is. I don't sweep a leg before he takes me out, but the hesitation allows my teammates to kill him in return. Switching over to our end screen, we wind up with three kills, seven assists, 780 damage done.